Hey, welcome to Easy Nursing, the channel that's dedicated to bringing you NCLEX reviews, general nursing tips, and practice question videos. Today we're going to be talking about Addison's disease. Uh, we're going to be doing some practice questions, but real quick, let's do a quick recap on Addison's. So Addison's disease, also known as adrenal insufficiency, has to do with the adrenal glands. And so if you didn't know, uh, on each kidney, right on top, you have an adrenal gland and it produces three main hormones. You have cortisol, which is the steroid. You have aldosterone, which has to do with holding on to salt and holding on to fluids. And you have androgens, which are the sex hormones. And these are the main three you'll see with Addison's, as well as Cushing. Now, with Addison's, you don't have enough of these hormones. So what happens, you end up getting uh, when you have low cortisol levels, you'll see, uh, lo this is the stress hormone, okay? You're gonna have low blood sugars because you don't have that stress hormone telling your body, I need sugar to keep myself going. You're also gonna have some weakness and uh, with aldosterone, you're gonna see problems of holding on to salt and water. And uh, instead of holding on to salt, you'll be holding on to potassium. So with the low salt and high potassium, you're also gonna have weakness. And with this, you'll also see low water, uh, low fluids, so you're gonna have hypotension and very uh, lots of dehydration. And with the androgens, which are sex hormones, you can see changes in body hair. Um, but the main things you'll be seeing with the cortisol and aldosterone. Let's dive into some questions real quick. So, which abnormal serum lab value is expected for the patient with Addison's? So we're talking about what lab is expected. So when you have Addison's, what labs are abnormal? Okay, so I told you of Addison's that you're gonna be having a uh, low aldosterone level. So instead of holding on to salt and water, you're gonna be holding on to potassium. So expect a high potassium. And here you'll see a potassium 6.0. That is a, uh, a high potassium. A uh, quick tip, when you got a high potassium, you really wanna watch your heart because you're at a high risk for dysrhythmias. Now I told you you're ho not holding on the salt, you're losing your salt and you're losing your fluids so you'll expect a low sodium, less than 135. You don't have the cortisol, the stress hormone, to tell you to uh, pr produce, let the glucose into your bloodstream, so you're gonna have a low glucose, so less than 70 or so. And BON just has to do with your kidneys. So you'll see the correct answer should be A. So just a quick uh, recap, you're going to have a high potassium with Addison's. Next question. So which of the following uh, should be included when a nurse is educating a patient about the ACTH stimulation test? So what is the ACTH uh, stimulation test? Well, let me just show you this picture real quick and it's going to help me to explain it. So. The ACTH test is a test to determine what kind of Addison's or adrenal insufficiency you have. So to summarize real quick, your pituitary gland should be producing ACTH. This hormone produced by your gland in your brain then tells your adrenal cortex to produce cortisol as well as aldosterone and androgens. Well, when you, Addison's is gonna be low hormones coming off the adrenal cortex. These are low. There's two causes here. It's either the adrenal cortex isn't working or the pituitary isn't working. Well, how do you know? They put ACTH into your bloodstream and this should synthetically tell your adrenal cortex to increase these hormones. Now, if these hormones uh, do increase, then that's telling you the problem isn't your adrenal cortex. The problem is you don't have enough ACTH. So the problem is your pituitary gland. Likewise, if they give you ACTH and doesn't do anything to your uh, cortisol levels, then the problem is your adrenal cortex is completely toast. So this is just a test to see what kind of uh, Addison's you have. So when you're getting the ACTH stimulation test, uh, what is expected? Well, uh, they administer ACTH IV. This is correct. They give this to you and then they check the cortisol levels in your blood. This says the test measures the response by the pituitary gland to ACTH. This is incorrect. I told you ACTH affects the adrenal glands, so this is wrong. Cortisol levels do not rise 
after ACTH therapy in primary adrenal insufficiency. What's this saying? It says when you have primary adrenal insufficiency, meaning the primary problem is the adrenal gland, when they give you ACTH, your cortisols don't increase. That is correct. So what this is saying is if the problem is your adrenal gland, when they give you this ACTH, your adrenal gland is not able to make cortisol levels rise because it is toast. That's the primary problem. Let's look at the fourth one. Cortisol is released by the adrenal glands. That is correct. ACTH, on the other hand, is created by the pituitary gland. Just throwing that in there for you. Oh, look at this. ACTH is produced by kidneys. That is completely wrong. It is produced by the pituitary gland. So let's take a look at the answers. We should have one, two, and three. All right. Last question. So you have a patient that come into the ER with Addisonian crisis. What Addisonian crisis is, is this is like Addison's except for emergent crisis. So uh, I told you low aldosterone, low cortisol, low androgens, but to the extreme, and the body can't compensate now. What orders would the nurse anticipate to be ordered to treat the patient? So let's all that apply. So let's look at our lady here again. Addison's disease uh, with adrenal crisis, also known as Addisonian crisis. I told you you're going to have low aldosterone, so you're going to have a high potassium and high sodium. You're going to want to treat that potassium because it puts you at risk for having heart, uh, heart dysrhythmias. Also, you're going to have uh, severe dehydration because you have low aldosterone. You're losing all your fluids. You're peeing them out. You're going to have, um, it doesn't say this here, but also remember you're going to have hypoglycemia as well of Addison's. Um, so let's go ahead and just take a look at the answer choices. So now that we know what Addisonian crisis is, would we give long-acting insulin? This is wrong. You may give insulin with Addisonian crisis, not for the blood sugars. I already told you they're gonna have low blood sugars. But if you give insulin with some, uh, some glucose, such as D50, what happens is you're not giving it for the blood sugars. Insulin tells cells to absorb two things. It tells them to absorb sugar and potassium, among other things. So when they have extremely high potassiums, and they're having cardiac dysrhythmias, if you give them insulin, it's gonna help the potassium be absorbed by the cells. Now that it's not in the bloodstream, the heart isn't gonna have those dysrhythmias. But to keep them from uh, dropping their blood sugars, you give them ins uh, glucose with it. So these patients have low steroid, low cortisol levels. So yes, you will give them IV steroids. Remember I told you the potassium's high? Pretty important, right? You also wanna give them k -exalate. This medicine makes them poop out the potassium. They get the potassium out of their body. All right, so they have uh, low sugar levels to begin with, and you may be giving insulin. So yes, you want to give them IV glucose. And they're dehydrated because they have low aldosterone levels. So yes, they will need IV isotonic fluids, like normal saline. So your answers here should be 2, 3, 4, and 5. There it is. Hey everyone, that is a quick video about Addison's and some NCLEX practice questions. If you like it, please subscribe to Easy Nursing. Uh, this is me here and I'll be making more videos like this. If you want more questions about Addison's, uh, I have a whole video dedicated just to Addison's for you, uh, summarizing it from beginning to end. All right, please like, subscribe, thanks.